Good morning. All right, so over the last maybe two months or so, uh, I've been chatting to a guy from Arizona named Mike Boll, uh, and he came to my attention because he's, he's put out a series of videos trying to explain why the angles uh, of the sun and moon cannot make sense in the heliocentric model. And he seems to have at least a rudimentary understanding of geometry, uh, so he is of interest to me. Uh, his main uh, piece of evidence is from Ron Hagberg over in Florida, uh, and the footage he captured of a lunar eclipse back in January uh, 2018. All right, so what did Ron actually see? Uh, first of all, he captured the lunar eclipse uh, where the shadow uh, began eclipsing the moon from the top down uh, rather than from the bottom up, which most flat earthers seems to think uh, should happen. Uh, secondly, he saw a partially eclipsed moon. Uh, when you see a fully eclipsed moon, uh, at the same time as the sun peaks over the horizon, it's called a selenelion. Uh, geometrically, it should be impossible, uh, but due to refraction, it is possible. Uh, and we'll get to that in a later video. Uh, Ron acknowledges in the comments that his view was obscured, so he couldn't quite see the sun and the fully eclipsed moon at the same time. Uh, so not a true selenelion. Uh, also, according to timeanddate.com, uh, both moonset and sunrise occurred at 6.34 a.m., uh, while the, the three-body alignment uh, between Earth, Sun, and Moon uh, in two dimensions occurred at 7.26 a.m., which was 52 minutes after uh, the sun rose and the moon set. All right, and just as a, an FYI, uh, timeanddate.com uh, sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset times uh, incorporate approximately half a degree of refraction uh, and you can check that out with the link there all right so here are mike and ron interacting in the comments uh, so ron is in chipley florida uh, and mike thinks this is the most amazing footage ever obviously disproves the globe uh, so your selenelian footage is going to be my magnum opus uh, and then ron admittedly says look i i don't think it was a true selenelion uh, the sun was rising as the moon was setting. Uh, it was daylight before the moon set, but the sun was not quite above the horizon. Uh, there were trees blocking my view of the sun. Uh, and here's the most important part for this video. Uh, I can't understand how the shadow was coming down from the top. I've had many globers try to explain it, but it still makes zero sense to me. Uh, and then Saul Good comes in and goes, well, you can't explain it because it doesn't work. Uh, and Mike Boll seems to agree. Uh, blah 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 when I get to the impossible top-down shadow uh, so this video is mostly about that top-down shadow all right so here is the the latest time-stamped uh, photo or video footage uh, of Ron Hagberg's eclipse in January 2018 uh, and you'll see it is at 6 19 a.m. and that is about 15 minutes before timeanddate.com uh, says the moon will set and the Sun will rise all right, so here is a top-down view of the three bodies, uh, obviously not to scale. Uh, in this view, we are looking down on the North Pole. So the North Pole is in the center here. Uh, sun is over here, moon's over here. The Earth uh, from this view will rotate anti-clockwise uh, and the moon's orbit will be anti-clockwise around the sun. All right, so we'll see the moon in its orbit gradually entering the uh, the umbra or the shadow cast by the earth so we'll look at that one more time reaching that uh, position where it's called a syzygy where all three bodies are in perfect alignment in those two dimensions from the top down uh, and this is also when it's peak full moon uh, and if those three bodies are aligned in three dimensions uh, then it will also be a lunar eclipse all right so here's a different view so now we're looking uh, from the perspective of a person on the earth with the sun behind them. Uh, so on the left, we have someone sitting at the North Pole, uh, watching the moon in its orbit enter the Earth's shadow. Uh, and here we have someone on the equator, which is roughly where Ron Hagberg was, uh, again, seeing the moon enter the shadow of the Earth. Uh, so you can see when I start this animation that the person from the North Pole uh, will see the moon eclipse from the left to the right. Uh, if you tilt your head a little bit and imagine yourself to be Ron Hagberg here somewhere near the equator, uh, as the moon enters the shadow, you will see it eclipse from the top down.
Very simple stuff, but I'll run it again for the flat earthers. There we go. Just tilt your head and you'll see this guy, see the moon eclipsing from the top down. All right, so here is a, uh, an animation that I made in my uh, 3D renderer called Povray. Uh, and this is two different views, but they will run simultaneously. Uh, on the left here is a top-down view similar to the one we saw in the first slide. So we're looking down on top of the north pole of the moon. Uh, the earth is over here somewhere and the sun way over here. Uh, this red dot uh, represents the, the perfect three-body alignment position uh, or the syzygy or peak full moon. So on this one, the, the moon will be in its orbit anti-clockwise heading towards the peak full moon position. Uh, and as you can see here, it's gradually, or just started to eclipse. Whereas in the, the view on the right, uh, we have our observer, Ron, at the equator. Uh, and this combines both the rotation of the Earth from the observer's position uh, and the movement of the moon towards the uh, peak position. So you've got two mo movements to take into account in this. All right, so let's have a look what it looks like. There we go. So you'll see from this top-down view, the moon moving from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen, slowly eclipsing half the moon. Uh, whereas on the right, you will see the moon setting uh, from that observer's perspective, simultaneously moving towards the, the red dot, uh, the perfect alignment, three-body alignment position. So let's run it again. There we go. So this on the right is modeling what Ron would see. An eclipsing moon moving towards the peak position, but also eclipsing from the top down. So hopefully that makes sense now to all the flat earthers that don't get it. All right, but what about the second part of uh, Ron's observation? Uh, and that is the question that Mike has been pushing uh, for quite a while now. Uh, it's that Ron can see uh, the eclipsing moon when the moon is on the other side of this three body alignment line in the middle here. So we've got Ron here looking at a moon that is 52 minutes before it reaches this uh, peak three body alignment. So how is that possible? All right, so let's actually do the geometry for that. Uh, all right, so Ron's latest photo is timestamped at 6.19 a.m. Uh, and that's 15 minutes before sunrise, which was 6.34 a.m. Uh, and more than an hour, so 67 minutes uh, before it reaches that peak uh, three-body alignment position, which happened at 7.26 a.m. All right, so how, how can a guy sitting somewhere near the, uh, near the uh, Terminator line, how can he see that moon, which would be well below his horizon? Well, first of all, you have to understand that the Earth rotates at 15 degrees per hour. Uh, so that 15 minutes uh, before the sun rose or the moon set uh, equates to 3.75 degrees of rotation uh, west of the Terminator line. Uh, you also have to work out how far away uh, in linear terms the moon is away from that uh, perfect three-body alignment position. Uh, and if you Google it or work out the maths, uh, you'll know that the moon's orbital speed or its linear speed uh, is approximately one kilometer per second. Uh, so that's 67 minutes before it reaches the peak uh, equates to 4,020 kilometers. So from this point here, the center of the moon to the center of the moon here is 4,020 kilometers. All right, so let's actually look at the geometry for this. So we have Ron, who is not quite at the, the Terminator line. He's actually rotated about 3.75 degrees to the west. Uh, we have our perfect sun, moon, earth alignment line here. Uh, our moon, as we said, the center of the moon is 4,020 kilometers away from that perfect three body alignment line. Uh, we also have to add the radius of the earth uh, in here as well. So from Ron's position, uh, the center of the moon is roughly 10,400 kilometers uh, away from that parallel line. but. How far can Ron actually see below that moon? Well, I'm just gonna do the simple trick. So this angle here, 
3.75, the tangent of that angle uh, equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. So X, our unknown, over the average distance to the moon of 384,000 kilometers means that this line from here to here uh, is 25,195 kilometers. So therefore, the center of Ron's eclipsing moon uh, at 6.19 a.m. Uh, is 14,804 kilometers above his horizon and simultaneously, this is the important part, simultaneously 67 minutes before it reaches that peak position. All right, so that's Ron's observation easily explained. Uh, and we haven't even incorporated any refraction yet. Uh, so what else needs explaining? Uh, number one, true selenelions, uh, when you can see the, the fully eclipsed moon and the peak of the sun uh, on the horizon at the same time. So we need to talk about how refraction makes them possible uh, even before the moon has reached its peak three body alignment position. Uh, we also need to talk about this absolute abomination of geometry uh, from Mike Boll. Okay then, let's draw it that way. And as you can see in the image below, the refracted moon is clearly eclipsing the refracted sun. And where is the true position of the sun and moon? Ruhif says, below his horizon. Yep, that's what your model says, so let's draw that in. And wouldn't that allow a person beyond his horizon to also see the eclipsed sun at the same time? No, <laughs> but let's leave that until the next video.